The transcendence of D.H. Lawrence's art. What's the first word that comes to your mind when you hear the name D.H. Lawrence? Is it novelist, artist, scandal, travel, sex, nudity, nomad, revolutionary? All of these would accurately describe our D.H. Lawrence. Throughout his career, Lawrence has used his platform as a means of conveying his opinions on matters he deemed worthy of public acknowledgement. His opinions, though, as we know, were not always shared with the opinions of the public at the time. But would he really be the D.H. Lawrence we know and love if he let that stop him? In order to better understand the ability of Lawrence's work to enact change by challenging societal norms, I want to talk a little bit about his different chosen forms of creative medium, more specifically his artwork. As is widely known, Lawrence's novels were not well received. He experienced frustrations when his works were being challenged and banned across the UK. The societal norms of the time posed as a threat to the publicisation of his work. Because of this, Lawrence chose to turn to art in the hope that he could express his views through an alternative, arguably more immediately expressive medium. Along with the artistic freedom it provided him, he also had hopes that this medium would be less likely to be banned. Of course, society hadn't changed, nearly the medium through which Lawrence created had, and as you would expect, his paintings were eventually banned. But art was not Lawrence's aim. Lawrence scholar Keith Segar argues that Lawrence gave up deliberately the pretense of being an artist, and explains how instead his aim was to discover authority, not to create art. Lawrence reveled in challenging societal norms and pushing people out of their comfort zones with the explicit nature of his written works. He was always alert to the relationship of art to the culture in which it was created. His art was typically done in the same theme and creative style as his written works. His works are based on vision, not realism. This being a vision, which is itself a product of the interaction between the reality within the writer, the naked self, and the reality outside him, the circumambient universe. Lawrence believed that a viewer's reaction to a piece of art represented their societal opinions and the problematic relationship society fostered among its ranks. He believed that in moving a vision from the mind's eye to the body's eye was the realisation of that vision into a physical form in which one could dwell and experience the effect it enacts. Lawrence felt as though allowing people to view explicit work lent a sense of mental freedom to be able to consider the effects of the nature of his work as it frees the viewer from socially sanctioned behaviour, as was said by Lawrence scholar Emily K. Delgano. Critics have viewed Lawrence's art through the lens of what it can offer the viewer. In comparison to the art of his contemporaries, his work highlights how their work, although better shaped, more objectively conceived, and contain poems which are more concentrated, comes across to a viewer as more frigid and futile. Lawrence scholar Keith Segar states how Lawrence's greatness is attributed to the fact that at the bottom he was not concerned with art. This equipped him with something which his contemporaries did not have, freedom from judgment. In the words of Cigar in his book centred around the art of D.H. Lawrence, Lawrence put life into his paintings as he put life into everything he touched. He painted his late pictures in the same way he wrote his late poems, as the spontaneous outpouring, without conscious technique, of a vision which had long matured in the consciousness. So... The intended takeaway from this is that you're able to view D.H. Lawrence's artwork as transcending a superficial appreciation for technique and instead are able to appreciate how his art was able to provide its viewers the opportunity for self-reflection with the hopes of provoking a change in societal thinking.